Hey yo, what is up guys, Akash here back with another video and I recently purchased a smart bulb while playing with the smart bulb uh, like this one uh, which you can control over the internet uh, using different things so suppose your uh, bulb is at your home and you can control your bulb over the internet from your office or technically from anywhere around the world so while I was uh, playing with this bulb I realized it is nothing but just a combination of something like an ESP8266 and some pieces of LEDs and it's so expensive like around 1800 rupees you can get it on sale as well if you want it you can make it yourself uh, it won't be as good as this but basically while playing with this bulb I realized why not make a video of how to control things over the internet or vice versa wherein you can monitor uh, some sensors over the internet you can see and basically this video will be about how you can send data to the internet or read data from the internet using the ESP8266 and uh, the different ways that you have different options that you have some free options some paid options like the ThingSpeak or the MQTT we'll take a look at it and at the end of it we'll be using an ESP8266 controlling it using the internet sending data to the internet using things speak for this video if you are into that stay tuned to the video i recently came across pcbgogo.com they are one of the most experienced pcb manufacturers from china they offer 10 pcbs for five dollars only with several shipping partners they even offer 24 or 48 hour express service. Apart from getting your PCBs manufactured, you can even get PCB assembly, layout and stencil manufacturing as well. Do check them out. All the relevant links will be in the description box below. Starting with the basics, you need to connect your ESP8266 to the internet. This is done by you when you connect the ESP8266 to the internet to your Wi-Fi it gets connected to the internet and now we need to establish a link so that we can send data from the SP8266 to the internet to some place where the data can be stored and that place is called a server a server is nothing but a computer that can store data which is connected again to the internet and which you can access using the internet virtually or remotely you can say now there are various kinds of servers available you can set up your own server to exchange data with the internet essentially your computer when it's connected to the internet your computer is also a server accessing the data from the internet like right now you're watching my video on youtube you're accessing uh, my video which is located on a youtube server and you're watching it so essentially that is what we need to set up now there are various servers that are freely available on the internet for hobbies like us like the things speak so ThingSpeak is a server by MATLAB which is made for hobbies like us wherein you can uh, send data to ThingSpeak, read data from ThingSpeak, see visualizations of your data and all that. So what we will be doing today is we have a DHT11 over here. I will be connecting the DHT11 to the ESP8266. We will flash some Arduino code on the ESP8266 and we will see real time monitoring of the parameters that is humidity and temperature from the DHT11 going on to the ThingSpeak server. We can see on the chart basis what the temperature and humidity is and that website can be accessed from anywhere so suppose you can set this up in your room in your house and you can see the temperature and humidity over the internet from your office or anywhere so before getting into the technical aspect let's first get into some basics of the things peak or we also have something called mqtt which i'll briefly talk about what mqtt is so firstly into things peak Suppose this is our ESP8266 and here we have the ThingSpeak. Now to send data from the ESP8266 to the ThingSpeak we will call this as write and to read data from the ThingSpeak server to the ESP8266 we will call this as read. Now this is a basic terminology that we can use in many server applications not only in things speak for data privacy so that nobody 
can randomly write to your ThingSpeak account, there is something called API key. And API key is present for both read and write. So while you create an account on ThingSpeak, you will be having some API keys which you can use to write to your uh, ThingSpeak server or read from the ThingSpeak server. We'll know more about ThingSpeak while I set up the ThingSpeak account on my laptop. But before moving on to that, let's first understand another technology called MQTT. Now MQTT is a lightweight protocol for data transfer between any device in the internet to the server. Server is generally a MQTT broker. So we call a MQTT server that can host data a broker in the terms of MQTT. One free MQTT broker uh, which is available on the internet is Mosquito. So you can send data from your devices for testing purposes onto Mosquito uh, MQTT broker for free. You can read the data from there. One interesting fact about MQTT is that Facebook Messenger initially started uh, using MQTT for their chat services. So all the messages that you had sent uh, to your friend over at Facebook, uh, it went through the MQTT to him. So that is how Facebook started their chat service. And there are many, many perks about MQTT, which we can discuss in a separate video. But today, again, moving back to the ThingSpeak account with the basics in mind, let's uh, see and set up our ThingSpeak account. So head over to thingspeak.com and then you can hit the sign up button if you don't already have an account with ThingSpeak. So ThingSpeak not only provides a server to save the data, you can also have data aggression and uh, analytics on the server as well for more complex data. Obviously, you will have a free trial version for some time and then you need to pay for their services. If you have a MATLAB license with your school or organization, you should use your work email to sign up with ThingSpeak. Otherwise, you can use your personal email. Once you sign up with your account, you need to verify your account. Once that is done, you can sign in. As soon as you sign in, you get a ThingSpeak page like this. So wherein you see channels, my channels, then you can create a new channel. So we'll be going ahead and creating a new channel. I already have three channels plugged in. So more about a channel in the free trial version. You can only uh, set up four channels at a time at one account and a channel is dedicated for one device. So if you have one ESP module talking to the ThingSpeak server, it will utilize one channel of the ThingSpeak platform. Now in the channel, you have eight fields. So you can send or read eight things at a time. So you can be sending over eight data sets. So eight parameters like two being temperature, humidity, moisture, and you can be sending eight data variables at a time to the ThingSpeak platform. So that makes a total of eight into four. That is 32 uh, fields you have in one free account. Setting up a channel, you can give it a name, then give it some description then add a field label and enable other fields that you'll be using. You can leave the rest of the fields empty, but uh, you can add some GitHub links. You can add a GPS location. You can add a live stream video of the same channel and then you can uh, save the channel. Once you've saved the channel, you'll see the number of fields that you had selected will show upon here. Uh, the API key that we were talking about is account and channel specific. So once you're in the desired channel that you want, you can go to API keys and then you can access your API keys. So the uh, this one is a write API key using which you will be able to write the data from the ESP8266 to the ThingSpeak server and using this read API key, you will be able to read the data from the ThingSpeak server onto your ESP8266. So these are like passwords to your channel. So if you uh, by chance leak your API key, you can generate a new API key from here. You can click the OK button and a new API key will get generated within seconds. And uh, whenever you write a code, for uh, writing the data or accessing things speak, you need to copy this API key and place this in your code. There are some sample uh, API calls on this side, which you can 
use to write or read data using your web browser so these are links which you can copy and paste in your web browser and things will be good so moving on to the coding side we can copy this api key and paste it in the code but before moving to the code let's prepare our hardware so this time the hardware will be really simple this is the dht11 it breaks out three wires the black one is the ground wire which i'll connect to ground the red one is the vcc which i'll connect to three volts and the yellow wire will be going to d3 which is the gpio 0 uh, which we'll set in the code and then i'll need to connect this esp module to my laptop using a micro usb cable and now we are all set from the hardware side to program the module taking a look at the code this code will basically read the temperature and humidity from the DHT11 sensor and using the SP8266 will send both the humidity and temperature parameters to the internet to the ThingSpeak platform. Uh, firstly, you need to replace this API key with your own API key that you will find in your account and then you need to place your SSID and password over here of your Wi-Fi which has access to internet then uh, that's pretty much it there are no changes that will be required and you can simply upload this code to the esp8266 after selecting the correct com port and uh, other settings so once you upload the code and uh, check out the serial monitor you'll see uh, things popping up like wi-fi connected and then the temperature and the humidity on the serial monitor and you see that it says send to ThingSpeak. So checking out the ThingSpeak website. So we see that the data comes over here. So it says 95 humidity and uh, the temperature as 22. So currently we have two uh, entries as of now. And on the serial monitor, we see it'll keep sending data to the ThingSpeak in some interval and the data will be popping up over here. And uh, right now, because it's just two data points on the same uh, value, we see a straight line, but this is actually an X, Y axis graph. Over the time, as the data comes in, you will see the variation in data. You can also use MATLAB to add some value to your visualizations. But yes, this is what you can do with ThingSpeak. On the other hand, you can do a reverse thing as well wherein you can send data from the ThingSpeak and toggle some LEDs on your ESP8266 or maybe control your relays. This is a very good application in home automation wherein you can uh, toggle some buttons on the ThingSpeak website from anywhere in the world and you'll be able to control any appliances of your own using just an ESP8266 and a mere set of relays. I'll be including that code as well in the GitHub repository that I mentioned in the description below, along with the code that I use uh, just now for this DHT11 sensor data upload to the internet. And uh, I'll be uh, mentioning the code for the LED uh, control, wherein you will be able to send data from the ThingSpeak platform to the ESP8266 and control the LED. Also, let me know if you're interested in the MQTT protocol. I'll be making a separate video if you guys want me to. And that's it for this video. All the relevant links will be in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't till now. Also hit the bell icon to stay notified. This is Akash signing off.